Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Thanks God that today we can meet again in the good health and better condition to follow and to uh, listening about the lecture with subject the innocent history in the time of independent liberal democracy and guided democracy okay uh, allow me to share screen i think uh, it is our subject and last week i have explained you related to the three critical period period in the time of Indonesian revolution, in the time of liberal democracy, and in the time of guided democracy. And I have explained you also, particularly in the uh, early period of Indonesian revolution, that there is a dilemma about the Indonesian independence, whether this is made in Japan and categorized as the not democracy or this is the new state with label and the image of the democracy i think it is critical issue in the early period of uh, revolution <clears throat> and there's also the changing of administration the changing of the government system from presidential system to ministerial system from the Constitution of 1945 to non 1945 Constitution, because according to some observer, including also the historian, that 1945 Constitution is undemocratic Constitution because the power of president is the full power. President not only as the head of state, but also head of government as prime minister, head of Indonesian military, and so on and so forth, including also uh, president has had the right about the creation, a nation, and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> in the early period, the uh, 1945 constitution was not popular. Because of that, they are the changing the constitution, the changing also the, the governmental system from presidential system to ministerial system, in which prime minister as the head of government and should be responsible to the parliament. In this case, parliament in the time of Indonesian revolution is the CNIP, Committee National Indonesia Pusat, as the new parliament before they are conducting the general election okay okay in that time also there's the battle the war in surabaya in which this is big become the turning point particularly for the political elite whether maintenance of independence should be uh, through the diplomacy or negotiation or through the struggle, through the war. I think the battle in Surabaya is very, very critical, particularly for making the reflection for Indonesian political elite in the time whether Indonesian independence should be maintained, maintaining with the diplomacy, negotiation, or with war or aggression and by uh, elected Sultan Tahrir as the new Prime Minister of Indonesia way for in independent uh, struggling finally through the diplomacy through the negotiation as I have mentioned also last week that Prime Minister Sultan Tahrir had, had re, uh, re received the letters from the uh, Ankel Ho Chi Minh from the Vietnam to uh, request to ask collaborate 
for struggling against the imperialism and colonialism. Vietnam against the French in the north and Indonesia against the Dutch colonial government in the south. But Prime Minister Sutan Sari rejected the Ho Chi Minh ankle request and according to Sultan Sahril and his co, his friend, that diplomacy negotiation is better for Indonesian government in order they are no more victim about the, the human, about the human resources because of that slogan in the time of Indonesian independence in which freedom or die Merdeka atau mati should be changed to the freedom and life freedom. Okay, I think it is very important about the position and also about the thinking of uh, Sultan Tahrir as the new prime minister, in which Indonesia should be maintaining the independence through the diplomacy, through the negotiation, not the war or aggression. Of course, when a prime minister uh, uh, find out about the or uh, what, what when a prime minister uh, makes the diplomacy with the Dutch government, with the referee is the British army, uh, that's the opposition. Yes, the opposed and also criticized by, by the opposition camp led by Tan Malaka. According to opposition camp, opposition group, that diplomacy is not effectively in maintaining the independence. So what is important in the case of Surabaya better should be good in coordination. So uh, Surabaya better according to opposition group. Uh, it is showing that there are the good spirit of the young Indonesian generation, this good spirit about the area area Surabaya. But what is important thing, according to opposition group, should be good in coordination, good in one command, and so on and so forth. However, there is the internal dynamic between the government who take the diplomacy way, negotiation way, and the opposition group who wants to maintain, maintain the, in the, in the Indonesian independence uh, through the war, through the battle. Okay, I think. And finally, there is also the Lingajati Agreement in which a British as the referee, as the middleman, particularly Lord Killen as the figure of uh, a British, as the representative of Light Army. And uh, from Lingajati Agreement, there is the good opportunity for the Indonesian government because, because as I have mentioned, last time that in Indonesian perspective, Lingajati agreement is similar with Hudaybia agreement between Prophet Muhammad and the Kurai society, in which textually, uh, it, if we see about the textually, uh, about the Hudaybia agreement and also Lingajati agreement is not good for Indonesian government, not good for the Prophet Muhammad. So I think it is the bad result textually because in the Lingajati agreement, for example, the Dutch uh, colonial government uh, just recognized the Indonesian territory only Sumatra Island, Jawa Island, and Madura Island. Meanwhile, the whole Indonesian territory is not only Sumatra, Jawa, and Madura, but According to Prime Minister Sultan Sahrir and also supported by Presiden Soekarno and Mohamed Hatta, okay, Sumatra Island, Jawa Island, 
Madur Island is the core capital. Core capital, modal utama, main capital. It is good for Indonesian independence. But from Lingga Jati Agreement also, they ask the winning political matters. Because by signing the Lingga Jati Agreement, the position, the status of the Sukarno and Hatta, who collaborated in the time of Japanese occupation, became the good image, not as the extremists, not as the criminal war, uh, war criminal, so sorry, penjahat perang, you know, uh, no, as the uh, what is wanted person, uh, criminal, but but as the real leader of the Republic of Indonesia, the new state of the Republic of Indonesia. So, Lingga Jati agreement, textually, it is bad news for Indonesian government, but politically, it is good news for the Indonesian government because the position of Sukarno as president, Mohamed Hatta as the vice president, is the real leader of the Republic of Indonesia. Not label as the war criminal, or as a Quisling, or as the collaborator of Japan should be punished by the uh, light troop, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I think it is the Lingga Agreement, and as we know also, uh, the Dutch colonial government not satisfied didn't satisfied with the Lingga Jati Agreement, and then the Dutch uh, army uh, invade the Indonesian territory, Sumatra, West Java, East Java, occupied by the Dutch uh, army. This is called with the the first uh, Dutch aggression, military aggression, the first Dutch military aggression according to Indonesian perspective. And the Dutch colonial government, I want to say, label this operation as the uh, positional action. Positional action, meaning that the Dutch uh, army wants to suppress about the Indonesian factor as the criminal, extremists, communists, and so on and so forth. Because of that, they label this first. The Dutch military aggression as the volitional action. I think it is different in terminology, okay, between the Indonesian perspective and the Dutch uh, colonial uh, government. And uh, the first Dutch military aggression, it is becoming concerned about the international community including also the new organization, United Nations, okay? PBB, PBB, Perikatan Bangsa Bangsa. United Nations also concerned with the conflict between the uh, Dutch and Indonesian government because of that United Nations wants to reconcile. Let's negotiate again, uh, let's making the agreement again between the Indonesian government and Dutch a colonial government. New nation states in the world, such as India, Australia, Egypt, and uh, nation states in the Middle East, also protested uh, to the uh, Dutch military aggression against the Indonesia. So there's the international community concern with the conflict between the Indonesian government and the Dutch of colonial government. Because of that, in January 1948, there's the agreement, uh, what we call as the Rand file agreement. It, it is because, uh, because if the Lingga Jati agreement, the referee, the middle, med, uh, middle man is the <coughs> British. In the Rand file agreement, the middle man, the referee is the United States of America. So in this context, United America, U USA, as the new superpower in the post-Second World War, become the critical role in 
making the negotiation uh, reconcile between the Indonesian government and uh, Dutch uh, colonial uh, government. Uh, so, Renfile Agreement, it is similar with the Lingga Jati Agreement, in which although the Sumatra, West Jawa, East Jawa invited uh, by and occupied by the Dutch the military, but the government of Indonesian Republic is still exist. Although the territory is just the Yogyakarta and surrounding area in central Jawa. But uh, Republic of Indonesia still exists. Uh, this is become the Dutch colonial government uh, takes the second uh, military uh, Dutch aggression. Uh, second Dutch military aggression and directly occupied the capital city of the Republic of Indonesia. Yogyakarta. Yogyakarta directly occupied by the Dutch uh, military and uh, not only occupied the capital city of the Republic of Indonesia, Yogyakarta, but also prominent figures of the Indonesian Republic, President Soekarno, Vice President Mohamed Hatta, former Prime Minister uh, Sultan Sahrir, and members of cabinet of government, uh, oh, oh, what is di, di, ditangkapi, uh, not kidnapped, is kidnapped, is diculik, okay? arrested, arrested by the Dutch military, and then uh, they exiled to Soekarno, Mohamed Hatta, and Agus Salim exiled to Prapat in uh, Danau Toba, in uh, Toba Lake in North Sumatra. Meanwhile, Mohamed Hatta and members of cabinet exiled to the Bangka Blitung in South Sumatra. So I think it is about the critical event in the our Indonesian revolution history in which the civilian leaders, prominent leaders, Sukar, President, Vice President, members of cabinet arrested by the uh, Dutch uh, military. Please you imagine if today Jokowi, Maaf Amin, and members of cabinet arrested by the, <laughs> for example, uh, USA military, what will be happen? I think maybe Indonesian government should be collapsed, okay? <laughs> but in a time of Indonesian revolution, by arresting prominent leaders of the Republic of Indonesia, Soekarno, Mohamed Hatta, Sultan Karir, and others, the Indonesian government didn't collapse. Why? Because the head of Indonesian army, in this case is General Sudirman, still again and uh, not arrested by the Dutch military. Sudirman tried to making the guerrilla, and then uh, it is very critical role of General Sudirman in uh, making the Indonesian government uh, not collapse because there is the arresting of uh, prominent uh, Indonesian leaders from president, vice president, and so on and so forth. So I think uh, it is become one of the critical episodes of our Indonesian history in which the military, Indonesian military, particularly OMI, TNI, EDI, Tentara Nasional Indonesia Angkatan Darat, has had the critical role in the time of Indonesian independence. From the case of second Dutch military aggression also, the Indonesian military, particularly army, can make the what we call as the uh, alternative government, okay, in which the government uh, from civilian leaders was collapsed. There is the alternative government from the center to the uh, profile level to the district level until to the village level. What we call now as the markas besar, TNI. 
and then codam in province level, and then codim in district or kabupaten level, and then koramil in under district level, and then babinsa, badan pembina desa in the village level. I think it is product of the Indonesian revolution in which the civilian leaders, para pemimpin sipil, collab, arrested by the uh, Dutch uh, military. Okay. Uh, however, similar with the first Dutch military aggression, in the second Dutch military aggression, there are also reaction from the international community, including also from the United uh, Nation, because of it, yes, uh, should be reconciled, should be uh, making agreement again. In this case, we know about the Room and Van Royen Agreement, in which the representative of Indonesian government by Mr. Mohamed Room, Mr. in the expert in the law, okay, of the Indonesian independent, Mr. is Sarjana Hukum, SH, Susahiru, no, Sarjana Hukum, okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, the representative from the Dutch government by Van Royen, Mr. Van Royen. And one of the critical results of the Van Royen Agreement is in order the prominent figures of Indonesian Republic should be returned, should be back again to the Yogyakarta as the capital city of the Republic of Indonesia. Because of that, Soekarno, Mohamed Hatta, and members of cabinet uh, should be returned to the Yogyakarta and between Indonesian government representative and the Dutch government should be conducted what we call is the last agreement and we know about the round table conference KMB KMB Konferensi Meja Bundar round table conference organized in the Den Haag in Netherlands from August 1949 to December 1949. And as we know that in uh, 27 December 1949, the Dutch government recognized sovereignty of the Republic of Indonesia. So I think it is the period of our Indonesian independence in which needed five years. So it is uh, in accordance with the prediction prediction of the Prime Minister Sultan Tahrir. According to Sultan Tahrir, Indonesian independent struggle just need five years because through the negotiation, through the diplomacy, if the directly war on battle, maybe the story of Indonesian independent will similar with the Vietnam Revolution, in which from 1945 to 1975 needed 30 years from fully getting independent. So I think uh, in this context, I think the what is wawasan, okay, insight and also uh, futuristic knowledge about the Prime Minister Sultan Sahrin is good in this context in which by diplomacy by uh, negotiating between the Indonesian government and the Dutch uh, government Indonesian independence can be maintained just in the five years okay so I think uh, it is about the history of our uh, uh, independence okay it is the first Dutch aggression military, military and also the second Dutch military aggression. <clears throat> okay, but <clears throat> I think in the time of revolution, I think it is important to note here that the story of Indonesian independence is not only the conflict, the rivalry between the Indonesian government in one hand and the Dutch colonial government in other. What is important here in 
the Republic of Indonesia I went to love. They ask the internal conflict. <laughs> what the uh, Judge McTunan Kehin said or label as the internal dynamic. Internal dy dynamic. Internal conflict between Indonesian leaders I went to love. If we read about the uh, Colin Brown books, <laughs> the history of Indonesia, according to Colin Brown and also other important scholars, that conflict between Indonesia and the Dutch uh, government depicting if, if less, no much, no many, but the victim, Corban, you know, the victim between the conflict of Indonesian elite, I would say, there are more. <laughs> so comparing uh, the victim between the class, the conflict, Indonesia uh, against the Dutch, the victim is no more than the conflict between Indonesian elite, I would say. As uh, we know that in the time of Indonesian independence, there has many, many way, many, many alternative. When or where, uh, uh, what kind of Indonesian uh, republic uh, should should be uh, a better Indonesian state? Should be based on the liberal uh, ideology? Or should be based on the communist ideology, or should be based on what we call as the non enlightenment, or in Indonesian uh, political terminology called as the bebas active. So what is bebas active? Actively independent, okay? Pre active or active uh, pre. So as uh, we know also in the time of Indonesian independence, particularly in September 1948, there's the opposition from the PKI, from the Indonesian Communist Party, in which the leaders of PKI, Muso, Amir Saripudin, and others, uh, want uh, to make Indonesia Republic should be based on the socialist or communist ideology. Because of that, they, uh, uh, communist uh, party leaders and members occupy the Madiun and then making the opposition to the Indonesian Republic in Yogyakarta. In this case, the uh, leader, leader of uh, PKI is the uh, Muso. And then uh, Sukarno uh, making the uh, announcement in in the radio in the radio in the radio of Republic of Indonesia in Jakarta, and uh, request to the Indonesian people should be uh, choose whether will support the Sukarno and Hatta or will support the Muso, and the result of this conflict between the Indonesian uh, Republic government and the Muso and his friend uh, uh, of uh, PK, PKI, uh, the Indonesian people generally supported the Sukarno and Hatta as the real leaders of the Republic of Indonesia. Of course, the PKI rebellion by occupied the Madiun also suppressed by the Indonesian army who loyal to the uh, Indonesian Republic government, particularly the army from Siliwang in West Java, who should be moved from West Java to Yogyakarta in Indonesian history called as the Hijrah. Hijrah event. I think it is very critical in which the uh, Siliwang, Siliwangi army can suppress effectively the Madiun affairs, the PKI rebellion uh, under the leaders of Muso, Amir, Saripudin, and, and others. So, uh, and uh, after the second 
that's military aggression in which the Yogyakarta as the capital city of the Republic of Indonesia was occupied and also after the prominent Indonesian Republic leaders uh, arrested by the Dutch military and generally the Indonesian opinion in that time that the story of Indonesian Republic was ending was end sudah berakhir okay because of that the islamic leaders particularly led by kartoswiryo in west java declare about the establishment of the in ai in ai negara islam indonesia di or tii darul islam and tentara islam indonesia because the central of uh, Indonesian Republic was collapsed. There's no leaders, no civilian leaders. Because of that, Kartoswiryo in West Java, in which there's also no power from the Siliwangi army who moved, who hijrah to Yogyakarta, declared the independence of the DITII, or the INII, Negara Islam uh, Indonesia. Of course, in this context, when the Siliwangi army returned also to the West Java territory, there was a conflict between the Indonesian Republic Army and the TII, Tentara Islam Indonesia, in which the DITII was penally defeated by the Siliwangi army. So, in the time of Indonesian independence, not only a conflict between the Indonesian government in one hand and the Dutch colonial government in others, but there's also the internal conflict between Indonesian elite leaders ourselves, between the uh, Indonesian nationalists and the Indonesian communists, between the Indonesian nationalists and Indonesian Muslim, Indonesian uh, Islamic leaders, such as in the event of Madiun in September 1948 and also about the what we call as the uh, DITII affair, the ETAE affair, okay? According to MC Reclap also, the internal conflict not only between the communists and nationalists and uh, Islamic radical, but also that's the conflict, for example, between the young generation and the old generation in the time of Indonesian Revolution. Uh, the conflict between the young generation and the old generation, it is uh, uh, showing in the what we call as the kidnapping of Sukarno and Mohammed Hatta from Jakarta to Rengas Dengklok. You know? <laughs> so it is also... Uh, about the conflict between the young generation and the old generation by kidnapping someone. So kidnapping in the time of pre become the uh, what is normally action. Okay? If someone didn't agree with others, he or she can kidnap someone, <laughs> including also I think if student didn't agree with the lecture, you can kidnap me. <laughs> You can uh, kidnap me <laughs> because maybe uh, it is the different uh, generation between you as the young generation and me as the old generation. Okay, so I think according to Riklet, in the time of Indonesian Revolution, there's the conflict with between the young generation in one hand against the old generation in other. There's also the conflict, the internal dynamic. For example, be, between what kind of Indonesian revolution? Uh, should be national revolution or social revolution? As we know, in the early time of Indonesian revolution, in many, many area, in Banten, in Aceh, in Brebes, Pemalang, Tegal, there is the social revolution in which the elite leaders, traditional elite leaders uh, should be 
step down, should be retired and report by the ordinary people, of course, lead by radical leaders. That's occur in Banten, in Aceh. In Aceh, there's the Perang Cumbok, you know, Cumbok War. In Banten, there's also the social revolution. In tiga daerah, Tegal, Pemalang, Brebes, there's also the social revolution in which the uh, elite traditional leaders uh, in which collaborate uh, in the time of Dutch colonial government and the Japanese uh, occupation uh, rested and also should be stepped down, should be retired for, from his position. I think it is about the dilemma for Indonesian government, uh, whether Indonesian revolution should be social revolution or national revolution. Finally, the Indonesian Republic leaders, I want to say, uh, suppressed and not or didn't agree with the social revolution. Because of that, the kind of Indonesian revolution is national revolution, not social revolution. It is also about the internal dynamic. And according to Riklev, in the time of Indonesian independence, there's also the conflict between what we call as the civilian leaders and military leaders. And as I, I have mentioned, in the case of occupied the Yogyakarta as the capital city of the Republic in Indonesia, and also arresting the prominent Republic leaders, it is it became the conflict about the, who is the critical role in the time of revolution, civilian leaders or military leaders. According to military leaders, particularly General Sudirman and uh, his friend, civilian leaders is uh, not good attitude and good spirit in struggle for Indonesian independence. Because most of them, what is menyerah <laughs> to, uh, to the Dutch uh, military. Meanwhile, the military leaders can conducting the guerrilla war and they uh, not be arrested by the Dutch military. So conflict between the civilian leader and uh, uh, what is uh, military leaders in is very important. Because of that, in 1960s, when uh, President Sukarno claimed that he as the PEM best rep, pemimpin besar revolusi, maybe <laughs> it is contract uh, contract dictionary, contradictory because in the time of revolution, President Sukarno, Vice President Mohammed Hatta, uh, was were arrested by the uh, Dutch uh, military, not directly leading uh, the revolution. I think uh, maybe the pemimpin besar revolusi should be label to General Sudirman because he directly uh, conducting the war, the guerrilla war against the Indonesian military. Meanwhile, Sukarno was arrested. What is menyerah in <laughs> in English? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so it, uh, according to Indonesian military, the title of the President Sukarno in 1960s, 1960-an, as the Pembesrep, Pemimpin Besar Revolusi. The great leaders of Indonesian Revolution, I think it is the uh, not uh, suitable, not uh, in accordance with the historical fact, with the historical reality, because uh, Sukarno Awansalov was arrested by the uh, Dutch uh, military. Okay.
because of that, we will enter to the new period of the Indonesian Republic was uh, recognized as a sovereignty by the Dutch government, by the Netherlands uh, government, and at the end of the Indonesian Revolution, uh, we will enter into the new period, what we call as the liberal democracy or constitutional democracy. See, 1950 to 1959. Okay, uh, so uh, that's the critical uh, question, particularly after Indonesia as the winner in the struggle of independence. What kind of administration, what kind of democracy will be choose by Indonesian people? So uh, in this case, I think there are many, many factors in which C1950 to 1959, the Indonesian government finally uh, choose the liberal democracy or constitutional democracy because most of Indonesian elite leaders who will become the prime minister, most of them, educated in Western culture, in Western education. Because of that, most of them want to an example how the European countries, not only the Dutch, but also the Britain, the Norwegian, and others in European countries implemented about the parliament democracy constitutional democracy, liberal democracy. Because as we know that after the Second World War, the winner is the democracy camp, democracy ideology. Because of that, when Indonesia gaining an independent in 1949 and 1950, Indonesian elite leaders choose that the kind of Indonesian government should be based on liberal ideology, liberal democracy, constitutional democracy, in which the prime minister should be responsible to the parliament, like in the European countries. Okay. So uh, uh, in uh, uh, other factors, there's also based on Indonesian leaders experience in the time of uh, Japanese occupation and in the early period of revolution about the constitution, constitution. 1945 constitution is also not the democracy constitution because of because of the C1952 1959 the constitution of Indonesia is not 1945 constitution, but professionally constitution. Undang-undang dasar sementara, okay, UUDS, professional constitution, in which there are the democracy matters. President and vice president just as head of state. Meanwhile, the real uh, head of government is the prime minister. So in this case, the poor power is the prime minister. Meanwhile, the president and vice president, according to professional constitution, is just head of state. That's symbolic status, status in politics, no real power. So I think uh, it is the answer why uh, C1950 to 1959, the kind of democracy in Indonesia is liberal democracy, constitutional democracy, parliamentary democracy. Because most of Indonesian elite had educated in Western education. Okay. And that's also the popular ideology post Second World War is the 
democracy. Okay. So uh, according to uh, Indonesian historian, I think the period between 1950 to 1965, it is the tri trial and error democracy, <laughs> trial and error in the democracy life. Coba-coba uh, uh, in the democracy uh, system. So whether the liberal democracy or constitutional democracy and also guided democracy, it is the tri trial and error. <laughs> democracy coba-coba. What is uh, suitable with the Indonesian community, Indonesian culture? Liberal democracy, guided democracy, or other democracy? Okay, so I think it is the critical period in which the Indonesian elite leaders had uh, tried to trial and error, particularly in managing the democracy uh, system. Okay, of course, in the time of uh, liberal democracy or constitutional democracy, there is uh, unstable government. Okay, so the, the government from one prime minister to others is not stable, unstable uh, government. Why? Because the Indonesian elite leaders had no experience how to to manage the administration, how to manage the government. Okay? And in uh, that system, in which the prime minister should be responsible to uh, a parliament, the relationship, the political relationship between prime minister in one hand and the opposition leaders in the parliament, it is also not, not good. And as the political landscape in that time, that the Indonesian political picture or landscape in this time uh, was categorized by three pillars or three variants. And I think uh, this uh, political ideology was identified by the young Sukarno in 1920s. So according to Yang Sukarno, if we want to understand about the political ideology, political orientation in Indonesia, they have the three variant, three school of thoughts. Uh, tiga aliran, you know. Uh, firstly, uh, nationalism, and then uh, Islamism, and the Marxism. Or nationalism, and then Islamism, and the communism. It is the three pillars of Indonesian of political ideology see 1920 to 20s to 1950s maybe until now okay and the nationalist ideology representative by PNI Indonesian National Party PNI PNI maybe now is PDIP PDIP okay it is representative of nationalist ideology Meanwhile, the Islamic ideology represented by, in the time, Masumi, Majelis Suro Muslimin Indonesia, Indonesian Muslim League Party, and NU, Nahdatul Ulama. Nahdatul Ulama, Emerging Scholars Party, okay? <laughs> Emerging Islamic Scholars Party. Meanwhile, the representative of communist ideology is PKI, Indonesian Communist Party. So the relationship between the prime minister and the members of parliament in which they have the three ideologies is, is not good. For example, if the prime minister comes from PNI, Partai Nasional Indonesia, and the opposition leaders in parliament is uh, Masumi, so Masumi leaders tries to make the prime minister to collapse to uh, retire, to resign from his position as prime minister. <laughs> because of that, the term or period for each prime minister, see 1950 to 1915, just one until two years. Let me see. The first prime minister in the 
time of guided or in the time of liberal democracy is Mohammed Nasir, okay? Prime Minister Mohammed Nasir. Just one year. Mohammed Nasir comes from Masumi and then uh, criticized by the parliament members from the PNI and maybe from the PKI communists because of that Mohammed Nasir collapsed just one to until two years in uh, leading the, the, the cabinet, the, the, the government. And Mohammed Nasir re replaced by the second uh, pri prime minister, I think Sukiman or Wilopo, eh? Sukiman Wiryo Sanjoyo, also from uh, Masumi, and then criticized by PNI in parliament collapse. And the third prime minister is the Wilopo, Wilopo from PNI, PNI, and then criticized by parliament and criticized in parliament issuing by Mosi tidak percaya, untrusted motion, okay? By Mosi tidak percaya, it became prime minister collapse, prime minister resign from his position. So Wilopo as prime minister from PNI also collapse because criticized by untrusted motion from the parliament member. And then Wilopo replaced by Ali Sastro Amijoyo from PNI also. And then uh, criticized by parliament members, resign. Ali Sastro Amijoyo uh, replaced by Burhanuddin Harahap from Masumi. And then criticized by uh, the uh, PNI or PKI. So it is the ups and downs about our uh, history of <laughs> prime minister in liberal democracy, constitutional democracy, in which the period, the term of uh, prime minister just one year until two years. Because of that, no real program uh, from the prime minister to uh, uh, implementing what the uh, core program, main uh, program. But uh, however, there's the uh, good program and good reputation from many, many uh, prime minister, although they uh, just a limited period. For example, from uh, prime minister Mohammed Nasir, Mohammed Nasir had the idea what we call as the Mosi integral integration motion from uh, Prime Minister Mohammed Nasir by Mosi integral integration motion from the Mohammed Nasir, the Indonesian Republic government system was changing from RIS, Republic Indonesia Serikat, United States of Indonesia, to the NKRI to the Negara Kesatuan Republik Indonesia. From the Indonesian uni, uni federal state to Indonesian unitary state. I think it is the critical role of the Prime Minister Muhammad Nasir. Including also, we know about the role of Prime Minister Ali Sastro Amijoyo from the PNI in which uh, he can conduct it, organize the international conference, what we call as the KAA, Conferensi Asia Africa in Bandung, in 1955. I think it is good reputation, good image for Indonesian government, in which, in the time of liberal democracy, constitutional democracy, Prime Minister Ali Sastro Amijoyo succeeded in organizing the ASEAN African Conference 1955 in Bandung. Including also in 1955, there's the first general election in Indonesia organized by Prime Minister Burhanuddin Harahap from Masumi. So although the period, the term uh, of the Prime Minister in the time just limited, no long, just one year 
until two years, but that's the uh, critical program, a uh, prominent uh, program uh, uh, for uh, from uh, the prime minister, including also the last our prime minister in the time of guided democracy, Prime Minister Juanda, Sundanese leaders. Juanda is very important in his position as prime minister because he issued about the Juanda Declaration. Juanda Declaration in 1957 as the asal usul, as the original of the wawasan Nusantara in the Indonesian modern history. So Declaration Juanda was changing our territory from the Indonesian uh, island separated by others become the Indonesian island as the total territory from Sabang to Merauke, in which between the Jawa Island, uh, Sumatra Island, Kalimantan Island, Sulawesi Island, and others not separated by ocean, by sea, but integrated by ocean by sea because of the Indonesia label as the Indonesian archipelago, not as Indonesian daratan or Indonesian <laughs> kepulauan. <laughs> okay, so between one island and others should be integrated, not separated. So sea or ocean, laut as the integrated factor, not separated factor. I think it is the Juanda Declaration in 19. 57. Okay. Okay. As uh, we know also in uh, 1945, there is the first general election in which the result is as the prediction by the young Sukarno in 1920. In which, if we want to understand about the political landscape in Indonesia, there is the, just three periods. Three school of thoughts, three main ideology: nationalist, Islamist, and communist. And in the first general election, there's also the four big political party: the PNI as the representative of nationalist ideology, and then Masumi and NU as the representative as the Islamic ideology and PKI as the representative of communist ideology. But what is also important here, unfortunately, between four political parties, particularly PNI, Masum, and NU, didn't want to collaborate with the PKI in managing and making the government. Because of that, it is also uh, become the factor why after general election, there is no stable government. There is the unstable government. Because uh, between political party, particularly PNI, Masumi, and NU, didn't want to collaborate with the PKI. Although Sukarno uh, ourself said that our ideology is family, fam, what is kekeluargaan? <laughs> democracy kekeluargaan, family democracy in which between PNI, Masumi, NU, PKI should be like members of family, should be collaborate. Should, should be baik-baik saja, please don't bertengkar, don't uh, <laughs> conflict. But in political reality, particularly between PNI, Masumi, and you uh, cannot collaborate good with the uh, PKI. Uh, because of that, we will uh, also understanding why in uh, 1959, Sukarno finally should be finished the liberal democracy, constitutional democracy, Let's we change, according to Sukarno, uh, from a liberal and constitutional democracy to guided democracy. 
in which Soekarno Awan Seleb as the head of family, kepala keluarga, and he won that between nationalist ideology, Islamic ideology, and communist ideology should be collaborated. What we call in Soekarno terminology as the Nasakom ideology, nationalist, agama, and communist should be united, should be collaborated. Of course, in uh, the leading of uh, Soekarno uh, leader. Okay. Okay. In 1959, uh, there's also the critical event in which the Vice President Mohammed Hatta resigned from his position as the Vice President because uh, Vice President of Mohammed Hatta didn't agree with the Soekarno conception related to the guided democracy. So according to uh, President Sukarno, the democracy system that's suitable for Indonesian culture and Indonesian people should be based on guided democracy, not liberal, constitutional democracy. Because liberal and constitutional democracy is Western-oriented. It is based on the Western values. It is according to Sukarno. And Mohammed Hatta didn't agree. See 1956, because of that, Mohammed Hatta resigned from his position as the vice president. It is also become the critical event because in 1957, 1978, there's the regional rebellion in Indonesia. There's the PRRI, PRRI, and Permesta in Sulawesi, PRRI, PRRI, what is PRRI? Uh, Indonesian uh, Revolutionary Republic Government, eh? Pemerintahan Revolutioner Republik uh, Indonesia, Indonesian Republic Revolutionary uh, Government in uh, Sumatra as the protest uh, about uh, protest to the central government because they are uh, uh, resigning about Vice President Mohamed Hatta, including also permesta, perjuangan semesta, totally struggle in uh, Sulawesi, also there's the rebellion. I think it is the uh, Indonesian modern history uh, about the political situation uh, in that time because uh, they are resigning from uh, what is Vice President Mohamed Hatta from his position as uh, Vice President? And in Indonesian terminology, there's the good, uh, what is terminology? If uh, from 1945 to 1956, there's the Duit Tunggal, Duit Tunggal uh, between Soekarno and Mohamed Hatta, but since 19... Uh, what is 1956? There is the duit tanggal, <laughs> duit tanggal between uh, two prominent Indonesian leaders, Soekarno and uh, Muhammad Hatta. Okay, I think uh, it is what we call the Perayan uh, Permesta, and this also become a critical factors why. In 1959, uh, uh, not only uh, Indonesia in the war condition, in the uh, critical uh, condition, and there's also we will entering to the new period, what we call is the guided democracy by issuing the decree of president. Uh, in 19 in July 1959, in which Indonesian people, Indonesian government should be back or return to the 1945 uh, constitution. Okay, I think I have lecture you in one hour more. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention, and we will switch. Uh, our lecture from Zoom meeting to WhatsApp group. I would like to see you brief comment in a WhatsApp group. Please, making brief comment related to what 
Paani Swirita was talking about today. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's be ending our lecture today by reciting together Basmalah. Ah, so sorry, Hamdalah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Hirobilamin. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Let's be sweet our lecture from Zoom meeting to WhatsApp group. I would like to see your uh, brief comment related to what lecture was talking about. We will meet again in the next week. Insyaallah, I will uh, I will use the different language, the Malay language. Bahasa Melayu, Bahasa Ipinupin. Hopefully, all of you also understood, understand about my uh, lecture. Thank you. Bye bye. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih banyak, Pak. Selamat selalu. Waalaikumsalam. We can leave from June.